Almost exactly a year ago to the day, I reviewed the original DF83. And today, I would say it's like deja vu, except the newest version, the DF83V, is basically unrecognizable in every way. Beyond the fact that it's single dosing, low retention, and has 83mm burrs, there really isn't much beyond the name connecting it to its predecessor. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of room to debate that the DF line of grinders, since the original release of the DF64, has been a bit of an industry disruptor, providing highly sought after features like RPM control, coded burrs, and now plasma generators at an affordable price point. So the question that remains, the one that's been hanging over all of our heads is, can the DF83V continue their streak of making improvements and really keeping up with industry trends? Well, that's the question I aim to answer today. So in this video, I'll get into the ins and outs of the DF83V, covering it from its build to its burrs and everything in between. And of course, in the spirit of full disclosure, the folks at MeCopy sent me this grinder without any expectation or participation in the content of this review, and only asked that I link to them down below if you're interested in learning more or picking one up for yourself. But before we get into the new hardware, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Standart Magazine. If you're into coffee, its culture, and learning about the world around it, Standart Magazine is the perfect addition to your brew bar or coffee table. With quarterly releases, they shed light on issues both inside and outside of the cafe highlighting people who elevate the industry, and deep dives into new ideas around all things coffee. To sweeten the deal, each issue also includes a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters, to give you the full sensory experience. You really can't beat the combination of fresh coffee and fresh print. So head on over to standartmag.com prometheus, use the link in the description or codes prometheus at checkout to snag $5 off your very own subscription of coffee and culture shipped directly to your door nearly anywhere in the world. And if you're still on the fence, you can actually try Standart for just the cost of shipping. There's not a whole lot to lose and a whole lot to gain. Considering the DF83V is basically a brand new grinding platform for the DF line, a quick overview of the internal and external features is a great way to get started. Of course, most noticeably, the body itself is now sitting horizontal, with a slight angle backwards to encourage your beans to flow into the grind chamber. It's also made almost entirely of aluminum, and all of it, including the chamber, casing, motor, sits on a sturdy heavy base, so it doesn't feel like there's much if any risk of tipping it over when engaging with the grinder itself. On the right side of the stand you have the general power and on off switch, and on the opposite side you've got the RPM control, which is the same as the 64V, a small stepped wheel with a digital screen showing the current speed setting, which ranges from 300 to 1600 RPM. And that's all powered by a brushless 680 watt DC motor, which features a high torque start aimed at avoiding stalling on lighter roasts. But we'll get more in depth on that topic a little bit later. As beans are ground, they're dropped through a magnetic chute that passes by an ionizer or plasma generator to reduce static and clumping, and lands in this steel dosing cup, which of course has a magnetic base. And as we all know, if there's no magnets, is it really even a proper grinder? On the front or the face of the grinder, you've got a large stepless adjustment dial, and when you want to get into the grinder itself, it requires no tools, just grip it and rip it. And on the inside, you've got this pre-breaker auger situation that's intended to pre-break and control the rate at which beans are introduced into the grinding chamber. And lastly, speaking of burrs, the 83V has options for both espresso and filter, which, as you can see, are significantly different in their design and geometry but I'll get more in depth on both of those sets a little bit later on. So now with the general overview out of the way and we're more familiar with all the parts and pieces that make up the DF83V, let's get into the meat of this review and talk about how all those parts and pieces, all this new hardware, actually functions and performs. And since there's a whole lot to go over, we're going to start from the top down. The hopper is somewhat modular. It's attached with an Allen screw, and it also has a removable top with an anti-popcorning attachment, but I do find the hole a little small when not using the bellows. I often opt to remove it entirely and use my dosing cup to block any potential escapees. But I do think that, at least workflow-wise, in terms of hot starts when you're dropping the beans in with the motor running, a small slide on the hopper would be a great and welcomed addition and make the workflow feel a little bit more premium and simple. Also, when beans first enter the chamber, they meet up with that auger or pre-breaker that I mentioned earlier. 
So that brings me to another question that's been asked very frequently about this grinder, and that's how effective is the pre-breaker? Because pre-broken beans actually grind to a more uniform size. So to test this out, I put 20 grams of coffee through the grinder without the burrs, and on three different speeds. Then I measured the weight of the whole beans that made it through unscathed. As you can see as the RPM increased, the pre-breaker became more efficient, with 3.9 grams making it through on 1600, 6.6 grams on 800, and 10.6 grams on 300. And speaking of beans making their way into the burrs, let's talk about the out-of-the-box alignment, because there was some concern over the 83V going back to using springs to hold the carrier versus the original 83's waveform washer, which fixed its overall alignment issues. And considering that the 83V has two burr options, I checked with both sets, and found, at least with this unit, the burrs are very well aligned, and required no adjustments or shims, even after a swap back and forth. And of course, the swap itself is very simple, taking just a few minutes, and because they've come to terms with users wanting to have a variety of burr options, they've designed the grind setting knob to have an adjustable zero. So once your new burrs are in, slowly adjust finer until they begin to chirp then slightly back off and turn off the grinder. Loosen the dial with the included Allen wrench, adjust your dial to just before the chirping point, tighten the dial back down, give it a quick test to confirm correct placement, and you're set with a new zero. And this feature, at least to me, is a small but meaningful addition that surprisingly not a lot of grinders have. One feature though that has become very widely popular is RPM control but unfortunately I can't say that the 83V hasn't stalled or jammed over my time using it. But to reduce the likelihood, hot starts are your best bet, though they aren't guaranteed, especially at lower RPMs and with finer grind settings. And in most cases of stalling, it tends to be powered through with just a short pause or a quick adjustment coarser, but in the cases that it's not, thankfully it is an easy grinder to open up and clean out. Since the grinder itself has been fully redesigned to allow the burrs to sit vertically and also includes a plasma generator, one of the big questions is retained grinds. So I ran a handful of tests both on the espresso and filter sets at 300 and 1600 RPM and also with and without RDT. As you can see, the retention numbers regardless of RPM or burr set rarely deviate from 0.1 of a gram with RDT but without a spritz of water, the range of retention opens up quite a bit wider, with a minimum of 0.4 grams and a max of an entire gram. Of course, if you opt to use the bellows, which I don't generally enjoy, you can consistently get true zero retention. But personally, I'll be sticking with RDT for a few reasons. For one, it seems to be just slightly more effective at reducing static buildup in the chute, but RDT does make a clear difference in the dosing cup. Also, I find it a relatively unattractive and awkward looking addition to nearly every grinder. <gasps> and finally, to thoroughly clear out the dead space, it needs a few solid taps, and I find it often just kicks a burst of air into the dosing cup, which kicks up grinds around my workspace. And speaking of workspace comfort, let's talk about noise, because that's always a hot topic when it comes to grinders, and for what it's worth, the 83V hit similar peaks when grinding to its predecessor with around 85 decibels at 1600 RPM and 75 decibels at 300. And finally, amidst all the seemingly quality materials, there are a couple of cheap points that are hard to miss, like the odd reflective sticker used to mark the dial center and the double-sided tape used to hold the magnet on the bottom of the dosing cup. That for me fell off only after a few days of use. All right, now that we've got the hardware out of the way, let's get more in depth on the burr differences and the coffee that they produce. Both available stock sets of burrs are DLC or diamond-like carbon coated, which reduces friction, or in the case of grinding, heat, and increases hardness or overall lifespan. And as I mentioned earlier, both sets are pretty different in terms of their cutting geometry. The filter burrs have a lot less variance in blade height and angle, which somewhat resembles a unimodal design. This results in less fines, which creates more clarity and brightness in the cup, and reduces the balance and body. The espresso burrs are more or less a classic bimodal design that produces more fines, and has a wider range of usability. 
This essentially means the cuffs produced are more complex, balanced, and textured, with a notable reduction in clarity and brightness. Basically, if you're looking for a more standard, traditional style of espresso, these are the burrs for you. And also, the espresso burrs are capable of grinding for basically any and all brew methods, producing tasty, highly complex, and full-bodied filter coffee, but the filter burrs can't grind fine enough to produce a traditional style espresso. Though, I did have some tasty turbo shots from them, but they weren't pretty. And even though both stock sets of burrs were plenty capable, they did leave me feeling as though they weren't putting everything on the table, or I guess in the cup in this instance. So any SSP set would be a worthy upgrade for those willing to make the significant additional investment. In the end, as I sat down to organize and put together my thoughts on the DF83V, the first thing that came to mind was it felt like they put some serious thought into it. And compared to the original, this doesn't seem like an upgrade or just a new version, but more so a brand new grinder, which shows a continued effort in producing the grinders that the coffee community wants and is asking for. Granted though, it's far from perfect. The stock burrs are capable, they're good, but they're not great. It is one of the loudest grinders I've used in some time, and the periodic stalling is an issue that seems to be plaguing a lot of variable speed grinders these days. But weighing that against its $800 price point, which considering its hardware and functionality, puts it in a pretty small field of available grinders. But on that note, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the DF83V and its place in the DF line of grinders? And do you think the new horizontal design is a winner? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spromethius, for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for early content access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.